Hi folks, how's it going? Um, Tanner Wilcox here. Uh, today is June 3rd. We're on the side of Haystack Mountain in Liberty, Maine. You can see Trues Pahan behind us there and uh, the Camden Hills. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, curved versus straight handles and the correct handles for the correct pattern head of an axe. So before we get into it, uh, just got to say some of the basics about axes is that um, Axes aren't a symmetrical object, though we would like them to be. Uh, the reason why we'd like them to be is because it's an object that you are holding and the, the business end of the object is really far away from you. So if it was a symmetrical object, it'd be easier to swing. But it can't be a symmetrical object. And the reason for that is because the bit needs to be a thin profile in order for it to do its purpose, which is to cut wood. And because the bit needs to be so thin, you can't have the way of affixing uh, the tool end to your hand, you can't have that be right on that bit end because there's not enough space there. If you put the handle up toward the bit, well then you'd still have to have this big wide eye uh, and that would defeat the purpose of the very slim profile of an ax head um, on the bit end. So to overcome this, we take an ax handle and we design it so that it gets placed in the ax head slightly toward the back kind of farther than we would like it to be as far as symmetry is concerned and balance is concerned. So because of this, uh, we invented the pole. And the pole is on the back side of the axe and its specific purpose is to counterweight the front, the bit of the axe head. And it's not there so that you can use it like a hammer or a sledgehammer. That's not its purpose. Though some axe heads are tempered so that you could use it as that, that's not the intention of the pole. The pole is there as a counterbalance to the bit. So now, that being said, a lot of poles don't really have the mass to really counter, counterbalance the bit. We don't really make them like that. Some companies do, though a lot of companies don't. So today we're going to talk about uh, the symmetry of the axe head and the, its balance and how you find that balance and then, and then which handle belongs to which head dependent on the balance of the axe head and that specifically. Not our aesthetics, although some people will choose that over the purpose of the handle. But that not, I'm not going to get into that, and that's totally fine. A lot of people like the look of a curved handle, and a lot of people like the look of a, of a straight handle. But today we're just talking about the intended purpose of the tool and how you choose a handle based on that. Okay, so let's start by talking about a baseball bat, actually. A baseball bat is a tool that you use to, uh, to hit a ball. And uh, the nice thing about a baseball bat is it's got perfect symmetry, meaning that the balance of a baseball bat is right where you intuitively think it's going to be. When you go and you strike to hit a ball, uh, you're going to hit exactly where you think you're going to hit after you've obviously learned how to swing a baseball bat. Um, this is a little t-ball bat, but it uh, still shows you the purpose here. Uh, it's symmetrical. Now, we would love for axes to be symmetrical in this way, and some of them are. Double bit axes are symmetrical, uh, and of course we're going to talk about that. But a baseball bat is a really good example of how we wish uh, an axe could act. Uh, because when you swing it, you know exactly where it is, because you are connected, and it's just a stick. It's just like 90 degrees. It's just straight to your body. You know exactly where it's going to be when you swing it, right? So we wish axes could be like this, but they can't because we need to affix a tool to the end of them. And then that dictates all these other things. So let's get into taking a look at some axes that are symmetrical. So right here, we've got a Grancer's Brux uh, throwing axe. Now this is a very, very symmetrical axe. Um, and with all double bits, you can tell right away why it's symmetrical. So the double bit axe here is the perfect example of a symmetrical axe. Um, when you throw this axe into a piece of wood, you know exactly where the bit's going to be. And the reason for that is if you lay it like this, it's perfectly balanced. It's not going to have any bit fall at all. It just returns right to that perfect balance point. So when you throw it into a tree, or if you're throwing it at a target, uh, it's not going to waver at all. And that's the whole intention of the balance there. So when you throw it into a tree, there's no bit dive, right? Um, so we can have a straight handle 
on a double bit axe because the balance point is exactly in the center. So that's the advantage there with the double bit axe, okay? Okay, so now let's talk about a single bit axe with a straight handle. So here we have a, a Collins, just a old timer um, with a straight handle on it. Now, when you have a straight handled axe, if the pole is in an accurate counterweight, then you're going to have what's called bit dive. And we could see that here. It kind of tends to dip down a little bit in the pole. The, the, the weight is farther forward than it is toward the back. So if you were to swing this axe horizontally, it would actually tend to dive as you're swinging. Obviously, you can learn to get over that effect, but it's one more thing that you have to consider uh, when you're talking about the style of handle and the purpose of the axe set. So a single bit axe is uh, good for limbing and splitting. And the reason for that is because when you're splitting wood, you're just coming straight down, right? And when you're limbing trees, you're also coming straight down. Because here's the tree underneath you, and you've got some limbs out, and you're just coming straight down, right? There's no amount of side, you're not swinging horizontally at all. So there's no consideration of the fall. That's not an important thing. So when it comes to doing things like, like splitting wood and, and limbing trees, uh, a straight handle is perfect. Also, a straight handle uh, is great for stuffing into your pack basket or something and just pulling it straight out of your pack basket without it getting hooked up on anything. So this is great for those purposes, but for felling and bucking and anything that you're even slightly horizontal, you're going to have a little bit of bit dive, right? So that brings us to our next axe here, which this is a, a Branton Cochran uh, Allagash Cruiser. Full dis full disclosure, I work for Branton Cochran. I make their axe handles and, and hang their heads. Well, I don't make their axe handles, but I, I hang their heads onto their handles. And this is one of my handles that I put on one of their heads here. And um, if you take a look at this if, at this axe, it is a very typical of main pattern, head and handle. And the reason why that's that's the case is because main in main you, you're cutting a lot of pine, and in pine uh, you want a thicker wedge uh, to the bit, and you want a smaller amount of surface area to the bit itself. And the reason for that is you're popping out wedges and trees. So when you're felling trees with a main wedge, it really, you pop out a lot of material. But the handle itself also has got a slight curve to it, but not a lot. And the reason for that is a, a, main, uh, a main wedge typically actually has a pretty good counterbalance pull. And the reason for that is because instead of it being like a Connecticut pattern, where you've got a larger bit, the bit hangs lower, um, it's shorter and therefore the pole, which is your counterbalance, has less weight to counterbalance in the first place. So a pole on a main wedge is the perfect counterbalance to uh, the uh, diving properties of the actual bit of the, of the axe. And so when you're swinging this, it tends to go exactly where you want it to. It feels balanced, like it feels like you're swinging a baseball bat, which is kind of counterintuitive, but that's just how it feels. That's the design. So now that we're into curved handles, let's talk about uh, the advantage of the curved handle and, and, and what its purpose is, right? So uh, the mechanical advantage toward the back end here is that it's a fulcrum point, right? So when you're swinging into a piece of wood at the very last second, you stop, you become an anchor to the ax, and the ax kind of hooks around and it slingshots into the tree. So you're gaining mechanical advantage, and this is acting as like just basically anchoring it right to your body. So when you throw it into a tree, that last second of the strike, it actually gains momentum in the head. So that's the purpose down here. Now, as for the actual uh, sweeping belly of a curved ax handle, the whole point there is actually to align it once again with the center balance point to the ax head. So if you take a look at my hands here, and I'm going to be making a section that amounts for the bulk of the time of my swing. So as my hand comes down, I'm throwing it here and then from here all the way down to where I connect, I'm basically going from here to there, right? And from here to there, if you were to make a straight line coming up, you'd actually hit that balance point on that head. So 
when you have a handle that's designed to, you know, align with the center point of the weight of the head itself, when you swing it into the tree, the majority of your time while you're swinging it, it is accurate. Um, it is balanced. It, the bit is going exactly where you think it should go. So when you swing this into a tree, it feels great. Um, it's very well balanced, uh, and that's the reason why you see a lot of axes up in Maine that look exactly like this. Now, they don't have the fancy little knob that I have at the end, but a lot of Maine patterns have a slight, slight uh, curve to it because they don't need to have a big curve. Uh, the head's balanced properly to be in there. So, moving on. I hope I'll fit all these in there. Um, so then here, we have what I think is a, oh, it's an American Axe and Tool Company axe here. It's a really nice axe. It's got really nice phantom bevel, um, nice spine going down the middle. Um, but it's kind of more, it's less of a main pattern. Obviously, you can see how, how large the bit is. And because of that, this smaller pole toward the back actually means that it kind of dives a lot. Now, that's totally fine. You can really see how hard that dive, that dove right there. It's, that is not a very well balanced head. Now, we're just talking about the head um, as far as balance is concerned, because if you actually look at the handle though, this handle is specifically designed to counterbalance that really lousy, small underweight pole toward the back of this ax head. And so you can see, I mean, this thing really sweeps in and moves back. Um, it moves back so far because you're actually also adding mass once again to the back end of, of the axe by adding mass to the back end of the handle. So that kind of gives you a nice little extra balance point there. But if you were to make a straight line in that, in that uh, certain section of the handle that I was saying you're mostly using when you're swinging the axe handle, you'd actually see it aligns really kind of far forward on this axe head. But once again, this axe actually swings very accurately. When you're swinging it, it has no bit dive at all. And the reason for that is specifically because this handle with a very big curve was made and hung on this head, probably even purposefully, because um, to counterweight the, uh, the very undersized pole. Um, this seems to me not the original handle, and that kind of makes a lot of sense. Now that's not like a really beautiful looking handle. I think it is. Uh, a lot of people would say that kind of looks a little hinky in this area, but uh, this is purposeful. You know, this makes your swings accurate. And when you, back in the day, were doing this for work, um, or doing this a lot on your property, uh, you wanted a nice, well-balanced accent. And that's what this is, because of the handle. And now we're gonna talk about my every single day user axe here. This handle, I made this handle. Um, I designed it for this head. This head here is a Rixford uh, from Vermont. And I really like Rixfords a lot, specifically because, I mean, I love the Rockway pattern. As, a, as somebody who halves a lot of axes, these little lugs down here are great because the more surface area connected to the handle, the stronger the connection between the axe head and the handle itself. It really lends to, um, you know, the handle having a longevity, like a, it, it will last on there for a very long time. It's gonna take a lot of neglect and abuse to make this head come loose off of that handle, specifically because of these lugs. Now, another nice thing about these lugs, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on when we're talking about Hudson Bay patterns, um, is the whole, another point to the lug is it also, it, it equals um, the striking bit, you know? You come all the way from here to here, and actually that's the same, about the same length as the striking bit. Now, if you were to over strike a little bit and just hit this section of the ax head, the lower section of the eye there, uh, it wouldn't really rack too much. And the reason why is because this lug is kind of making sure that there's some pressure right there behind where you've just struck. And so it won't kind of kink around and get loose after time. Um, one of the main reasons why I like Rixfords is because they actually have very large poles. Now, if you can kind of see on the top of this ax head here, the, the eye is pretty far forward in relation to most of the axes that we have back here. 
um, with the exception of Brandon Cochran. Um, but, so this pole is very well balanced to that head. Um, so once again, we kind of have a little bit of a main sweep. It's not a very, very big uh, sweep toward the front here. We do have some curvature to the back, but that's just because I like my axe handles really thin, so they have a lot of spring to them. Um, not a lot of people do, but this is my axe handle, and I'm an axe handle maker, so I made it uh, the way I liked it. And um, But so, if you take a look at that section here, once again, it's just kind of a nice balance point right there in the middle. And when you swing this axe, it is like absolutely dead, dead, dead accurate. If, whether you're felling or bucking or splitting wood or limbing, I use this axe for everything. Um, and it's all about the balance that the head has to the handle. And when I'm, when I'm, um, when I'm figuring that kind of thing out, I often will take a pencil and uh, just lay it on a flat surface, take the axe head, put it on top of that pencil and find kind of that balance point of the head. Like I was saying, on this Rickshirt, it is a little front heavy. That's how come we've got a swept handle. Um, but it's, the mass is right on the money and uh, this thing is super accurate. We're gonna run out of space here. So now having talked about all of that, uh, there is a very specific handle design for a very specific ax head that always seems kind of funny when you first look at it. But then when you give it true consideration, it makes a lot of sense. And that is the Adirondack pattern, which is a double bit with a single bit style handle. Now, the whole purpose of this, there's many purposes here. I, I believe the main reason why you'd want a single bit handle on a double bit ax head is because most of the time back in the day, they would pick a, a bit, one of the two bits, that was very specifically for actually filling, and the other bit would be for grubbing kind of material and underbrush and stuff. So that way, if you were to accidentally, say, strike a root or something, and, uh, or if it was just a, you know, if the, if the bark lower to ground had more dirt in it, and so as you're kind of chopping low, you might dull this back edge, you'd still have a very sharp edge to fill your tree with. Um, and so you're actually kind of talking about another sim similar situation with a pole. So here's the, the, your main cutting edge, and then to the back here is your counterweight. Um, with a purpose, right? So one of the things that happens with that is, I know what you're thinking because we were talking about double bits earlier, you'd think that because you'd add this, this handle, which is swept, that the balance point will be up here, closer to the front, which is true. And the reason why that actually doesn't matter in this case is because you are gonna be wearing this back uh, cutting edge faster you're actually going to be uh, removing a lot of weight as you sharpen that when you get back. And, and so it's actually going to be pulling the weight toward the front of the bit. Now this is still a very ba well balanced axe head. It's, you can totally see that it's got a shorter back end than the front. Uh, and that is why this axe handle actually aims kind of for the balance point to be about here. Um, that and I, I personally really believe the real reason why you'd want a, a Adirondack handle on a double bit is because uh, this fulcrum point, which we talked about earlier, when you're swinging that into a tree, you get that last little bit that adds momentum uh, to your swing and because this acts as an anchor uh, to your body. And so you lose that nice additional feature on a straight handled axe. So this is a very, very nice axe. Um, I don't use this axe, it's just a, an axe I have around to show us an example of that kind of work. They've got the nice little two foot uh, marker there, so you can do cordwood. Last but not least, let's talk about the problem child, which is not really a problem child at all, but it's a pain in my ass as a hafter. We'll leave that double bit down the grass. So, Let's talk about the Hudson Bay pattern. And I love, I love Hudson Bay patterns for what they're intended for. Um, 
but they've got limitations and as somebody who makes axe handles I a lot of the times um, will be working on Hudson Bay patterns and one of the reasons why is because they get loose a lot faster than most other axes. So here we have this beautiful Snow and Neely um, Hudson Bay pattern which actually this is actually a nicer Hudson Bay pattern if you ask me because it's actually got more the ratios are better a lot of Hudson Bay patterns you'll see a very thin uh, connection to the eye and then the bit will be very large and that's like that's a bummer for anyone who's gonna be hafting that thing because if you overstrike and you hit this lower edge it's gonna rack that forward a lot and after using it it's just gonna keep doing that motion and it's gonna weaken the back end of that connection to the handle itself. So this has got a little bit more meat and so therefore it's got a better hold. Um, but that's not to say that uh, Hudson Bay patterns don't have a place in this world. They're actually really incredible tools if you use them kind of how they're meant to be used. They're meant to be an all-purpose uh, kind of ax. Whereas most axes that I just showed you before are for felling or for limbing or bucking or splitting wood. Uh, this is for just about everything. It is for using like a carving axe. Um, you can use it like a hatchet. Uh, you can use it to split kindling, small kindling and such. And uh, you can even use it for felling in a pinch if you have to. Um, you can use it for splitting big stuff too if you have to. Uh, but like I was saying, you don't want to just use it for felling all the time. You don't want to just use it for splitting all the time. Because if you do that, if this is your main felling axe, well, I've got bad news for you. It's going to come loose. Uh, just, that's just the nature of physics when it comes to how much mass is actually attached to the handle. Um, this thing is a sweetheart. Uh, I'm working on this uh, for a friend of mine, Ed, who is a cooper down in Portland, Maine, South Portland and he loves this thing and I can totally see why. Uh, for light work, this is just like an everyday, unreal kind of easy to work with ax. If you are gonna be using this for filling every day, it's gonna come loose and all the people who are gonna, anyone after you who's gonna have to rehang that is gonna be upset that it's loose. But uh, if you take care of your tools um, and treat them appropriately for their actual purpose, well, they'll last a lot longer. Now, let's see. Speaking of actual purposes, uh, I'll have, I'm gonna be putting out another video uh, probably pretty soon. Maybe not even really soon because I'm a very busy person. But uh, hopefully I'll be putting out a, visit, a video soon of uh, talking about different pattern heads and what their purposes are because just like all tools, there is a reason why an ax head uh, from New Jersey is shaped the way it is. There's a reason why an axe head from Maine is shaped the way it is. All of those things are very purposeful. Um, it is not having, they do not have anything to do with aesthetics. Uh, that is for a purpose. It's dependent on the wood varieties that you're cutting the most. Anyway, I'll get into that in the next video. Um, for now, I'll uh, pack up my basket and head on home. See you guys. Stick! <laughs>